welcome today to today's webinar, Storm Sewer and Culvert Solutions, including applications and best practices. Our two presenters today are Dominic Turner, a licensed professional engineer from our Quebec team, and Cody Neese, our technical sales representative in Ontario for Armtex Drainage Solutions Business Unit, whom I'll, who I'll introduce more shortly. My name is Janine Yetke, Director of Marketing. My group runs Armtex Drainage Solutions webinar program, and I'll be your host for today's event. We also have James Carter on the line, who is our technical moderator and who will be running questions and answers at the end of the session. First, I'll go quickly over some of the housekeeping items for today. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please enter your question into the question log. If you're sitting in a boardroom or with a group of people, please designate someone to collect and input the questions from the group into the question log. We encu encourage questions. Um, please join in the discussion. If, you're, if we're not able to get to your question due to time constraints, please rest assured we will respond through email after the webinar. As a reminder, attending this session will qualify you for a one-hour technical informal CPD credit. For those who have registered directly, we'll send out the certificate to the email provided upon login. For those who are attending as a group, please compile your list of attendees and send the attendance list with the required details to webinars at armtech.com. That's your full name, title, and email. I'd like to start off with a brief introduction to Armtech. We are one of Canada's oldest and largest infrastructure companies supplying solutions ranging from steel and HDPE-based bridge and culvert materials to precast building systems. With locations across the country, we are well positioned to serve your needs wherever you are, both nationally and internationally. As you can see, Armtech offers products in a wide range of categories, including precast products such as building systems, parking structures, and sound wall systems. On the drainage side of the business, we offer pipe and culverts, engineered steel bridge solutions, stormwater management systems, and much more. We serve numerous sectors from municipal to forestry and mining and energy. More about how we service these sectors can be viewed on our newly revamped website or through discussion with one of our experienced sales representatives. With our centralized engineering department and regional engineers, Armtech has the exceptional capability to fully support design and challenging engineered project requirements. Our company also has expertise to take your project through all phases of the design and construction process with the design build delivery method. And as you can see with this map, we have manufacturing and sales locations suited to meet your local needs across Canada. So we look forward to working with you. Presenting today are two Armtech employees, Dominic Turner and Cody Neese. Both Dominic and Cody have a wide range of experience with storm sewer and culvert solutions, which they will present today. Dominic is a regional engineer with Armtech's Eastern Market Area. He has significant experience in the specification, design, and installation of culverts, aqueducts, and sewers. As a member of the BNQ Review Committee, he has also been involved in the review of HDPE pipe standards. His expertise extends the full range of drainage and engineered solutions and is relied on to provide advice and recommendations for challenging job sites across the eastern region. Cody is a technical sales representative with Armtech located in Ontario and consults regularly with engineering consultants and municipalities to identify the best solutions available for any budget. He supports Armtech's entire portfolio of drainage products as well as other infrastructure building products such as bridge plate, multi-plate, and MSE retaining walls. Both of them look forward to plenty of questions and answers after this presentation. And with that, I'll now hand off the presentation to Dominic Turner. Welcome, Dominic. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, today's agenda, uh, today's presentation will provide an overview of storm sewer and culvert solutions, application and best practices. I'll begin with a brief introduction to flexible pipes. I'll then cover the corrugated HDP pipes product, which includes drainage tubing, dual wall corrugated HDP pipes, and steel reinforced polyethylene. We will also cover the corrugated steel pipes and the spiral rip steel pipes. I will also discuss the best practices for installation of flexible pipes. Then I will turn it off to Cody. I will turn it over to Cody for the project profiles. There will be also an open Q&A session at the end of this presentation, so feel free to ask your question. Now let's begin with the introduction to flexible pipes. 
there is a pi uh, an interaction between the pipe and the soil uh, in the flex with the flexible pipes. So there are two components, basically, the soil component, which is a granular backfill envelope with known properties or engineer backfill, if you will. And there is also the pipe component, which is typically a steel or HDP pipe that is that has a great compression strength. Now, the big difference between flexible and rigid pipes, uh, on the flexible pipe, there is a uniform distribution pressure throughout the backfill. On the other hand, rigid pipes offers a non-uniform pressure distribution, <coughs> which uh, means a higher bearing pressure. Typical loading conditions, there are two loading involved, the live load and the dead load, and both of them are depending on the height of cover over the pipe. Those two um, forces apply the pressure on the pipe. The pipe is then slightly bent due to the pressure, and support from surrounding backfill ensures that the pipe keeps its shape. The pressure from the dead load, the live load, and backfill reaction applies a uniform radial distribution that becomes shell compression and flexible structure, structures perform very well under ring crump, compression. Most pipes are round and radial pressure is uniform around the pipe as said before, but this is different in the case of a non-circular pipe like a pipe arch. External pressure is in fact inversely proportional to ra radius, which means bottom corners apply a higher pressure to the soil while pressure underneath the invert is less important due to, to, due to the flat heart. Now increasing the height, height of cover will indeed increase the dead load, but it will also dissipate the live load through the backfill. This means with heavy construction equipment, we might want to increase the cover during construction. Flexible pipes offer many advantages over rigid pipes. First of all, there are less than 10% the weight per meter of concrete pipes, providing easier handling and, ins and faster installation. As I said before, they also offer a uniform distribution of the pressure through the backfill material, which results in a lower bearing pressure. One of the greatest advantages is the fact that sign and symptoms may be visible over a, lo a long period of time before the pipe collapse. Pipe deformation may reach over 20% without failure. Now let's talk about the high density polyethylene corrugated pipes. First product I'm going to cover is the drainage tubing, which is a single wall flexible HDP pipe with interior and exterior corrugations. They are manufactured per the Quebec standard B and Q 3624-115. Diameters are available from 100 mm to 300 mm. Tubing are quite flexible, which permits to roll them in coils of 30, 45, and 75 meters. They are also available in 6 meter land for 200, 250, and 300 millimeter diameter. The pipe stiffness is 210 kPa. They can be provided solid, perforated, or also perforated with geotextile to prevent the migration of fine particles. Typical applications are foundation and agricultural drainage. There are a lot of fittings available for tubing, like T's, Y's, elbows, coppers, and a lot of different adapters, like the downspout adapter, and much more. Single wall versus dual wall corrugated HDP pipe. The single wall pipes have a corrugated interior and offer a high degree of longitudinal flexibility. Okay, I will not cover the BUS 1000 single wall pipe in details since it is a product that is only available in Quebec. On the other end, the dual wall is straight and it requires fitting to change its direction. They also provide a better hydraulic performance due to its smooth interior. Dual wall semi-rigid corrugated HDP pipe with smooth interior are manufactured per the standard CSA B182.8 standard, which is the storm sewer standard, 
and it's Quebec equivalent, which is BNQ 36, 24, 120. Now, the polytype product is manufactured per the CSA B182.6, which is the sanitary sewer um, standard. Diameters are from available from 100 to 900 millimeter, but up to 750 millimeter for polytype, all in lengths of 6 meter. There are two stiffness available. 210 kPa, which is used for driveway culvert or forestry industry, and 320 kPa, which is usually used for transportation and municipal applications since it can withstand a higher height of cover. Training systems are usually bell and spigot, but can be also provided in plain ends and joined together with split couplers or double snap the bulk bell snap. The types are solid or perforated and the manning coefficient is 0.012 which is very good uh, like I said before because of it, the smooth pipe interior. Typical applications are culvert, storm sewers and also sanitary sewers for the polytype as well as road drains. Joining system, watertight joining systems are typically the bell and spigot. We, there is the ultra stab 75 coupler for the storm sewer application that can withstand 75 kPa and the ultra stab 100 coupler for the sanitary applications. The solid type joining systems, there's a couple of them. There is the insert coupler, the external double bell snap, which are for the smaller diameters, external split coupler and screw-on couplers for the larger diameters. Dual wall semi-rigid corrugated HDPE also exist in larger diameter, but they are manufactured per the American standard Ashto M294. Diamet available diameters are 1050 millimeter, 1200 and 1500 millimeters, all in lengths of 6.1 meters. Now the difference between the 900 millimeter and the larger diameters is is about the pipe stiffness that is decreasing. We're talking about 179 kPa minimum for 1050 millimeter diameter and 95 kPa minimum for the 1500 millimeter diameter, which result in a less height of cover that we can use over those pipes compared to 900 millimeter and less. They are they can be provided solid or perforated and joining system are bell and spigot. Manning coefficient is exactly the same since it has also a smooth interior. Typical application are culvert, storm sewer and detention systems due to the large available diameters. There are a lot of standard fittings available for the dual wall corrugated HTP pipes as you can see on this list. Different custom fittings can be manufactured as well to fit project specific needs. HDP manholes are available in dual wall or triple wall. Typically triple wall manholes are used under traffic loading. The smooth exterior prevents the manhole from moving with ground freezing. HDP can be easily cut on site to the required length in less than a minute with a quick cut saw. It is also very light which makes handling and installation safer and faster. It is also very resistant to impact that may occur during unloading and installation. HDP offers the highest level of chemical resistance and abrasion resistance of all traditional sewer products including CSP that we will cover in the next section. The graphic on the right of the screen shows the abrasion in millimeter versus the number of load cycles. HDP is the best performer among the tested materials. HDP is, the one, is one of the most chemically inert plastics and therefore is extremely resistant to chemical attack and corrosion. It can also be used in extreme condition with pH as low as 1.5. There is also no problem of using it with de-icing salt in contact with the, with the HDPE. The fabrication process of those HDP pipes 
first phase is the preparation of the mixture that is primarily composed of virgin HDP and a minimum of 2% of carbon black for the UV production. Mixture may have a small portion of regrind that come from pipe scrap. During the extrusion phase, the resin mixture is melted and fed to the molds by an endless crew. During the corrugation phase, the melted polymer is moved through a die to the molds by a vacuum process. The molds rotate so the corrugation process is a continuous one. The pipe is then cut to the required length. The steel reinforced HDP pipes or SRPE. This product is a new technology manufactured in compliance with ASTM F2562. This HDP pipe is made of high quality HDP pressure rated resin. The profile is reinforced with galvanized steel and the, so the steel provides the strength while HDP provides the durability. It is available in diameters between 900 to 3000 millimeters in, length of, in standard lengths of 4.3 and 7.3 meters but can also be supplied in custom length up to 15 meter. The manning coefficient is also 0 0.012 there are four joining systems options. I'll cover that on the next slide. Typical application are culvert and culvert relining. And Duramax is interesting for this application because of its small wall thickness that is only about two inches for the 3,000 millimeter diameter. Can also be used in sanitary and storm sewers application as well as detention systems. Now the four joining systems, the first one is the flat steel band that is soil tight, the low head non-reinforced bell that is watertight to 20 kPa for storm sewer applications, and the high performance reinforced bell that is watertight to 100 kPa for sanitary application. There is also the electrofusion copper which is an internal extrusion welded copper that is watertight to 240 kPa. Here is a figure showing the bell and spigot. I draw your attention on the detail on top which is the uh, which shows the reinforced, the steel reinforced bell over there with galvanized steel. Electrofusion copper is basically a metal flat band on the exterior side of the pipe and an internal HDP extrusion welded copper that is filled attached or welded on site on the inner side of the pipe. This is a project, a relining project we have been involved in with the Duromax product, but Cody will cover in more detail. I just want to draw your attention to the thickness of the wall that is very small. So it suits perfectly those kind of applications. Now the corrugated steel pipes. They are helical with a lock seam and manufactured per the CSA G401 standard. Diameters are available from 150 to 3,600 millimeters in thickness of 1.6, 2.0, 2.8, and 3.5 millimeter. There is also the 4.2 millimeters, but it is only available in galvanized steel. There are three corrugation profiles that are basically depending on the size of the diameter. Standard length are six or nine meters but can be supplied up to 50 meters but with non rear roll end. And I will be discuss discussing in more detail later on about non rear roll end. Manning coefficient is between 0.012 and 0.025 and is increasing with the diameter. This is a little bit high compared to the smooth interior HDP pipes that we just covered. There are three available coatings, galvanized, aluminized type 2, and polymer coated with galvanized steel. Typical application are culvert and detention systems. And this is interesting because CSP is the most cost effective solution for detention systems of large diameters. There are three, here are the three corrugation profiles and the detail of the lock seam. Pipe parts are particularly useful for a site where headroom is limited and also have an hydraulic advantage at low flows. They are produced from round CSP by either applying internal or external pressure to achieve the specified span and rise dimensions. They are available in both 68 per 13 and 125 per 25 corrugation patterns with an equivalent diameter between 400 and 3600 millimeters. 
Now the spiral rib steel pipe is also manufactured per the CSA G401, available in diameters between 450 to 2,600 millimeters in two available thickness 2.0 or 2.8 millimeters. The rib profile is 119 per 19 millimeters and those ribs are box shaped as you can see on the figure. This is very interesting because this has an impact on the manning that is 0.013 which is approximately the same for concrete pipes. So this offers a great advantage over standard corrugated steel pipes. Lengths are available up to 9 meters and available also in the three same coatings. Typical application are culvert and culvert relining. About the three coatings, galvanized steel is the most used in mining, is mostly used in mining and forestry industries or non-aggressive environments as well. It has a service life between 25 to 50 years depending on the environmental parameters. Aluminized steel type 2 is fabricated from steel which has been hot dipped coated in a bath of commercially pure aluminum. It has two to three times the service life of galvanized steel and across a wider range of pH and resistivity. Aluminized coating has proven its work since its very first use in 1952. For maximum protection, there is the polymer coated galvanized steel which performs very well in extremely aggressive environments and is expected to provide to provide continuous protection for more than 100 years according to a recent study. I would say in the worst case scenario we can expect a 75 years if the parameters are very aggressive. There are four site environmental parameters that influence the service life of, of corrugated steel pipes. The figure shows the appropriate range for each parameters of the different coating. As you can see, polymer laminated coatings is recommended for a, between a pH, a pH of 3 and 12. This is a different story for aluminized and galvanized, which is, most, which is a little bit limited compared to polymer laminated. There are three other parameters, which is resistivity, and the higher is the resistivity, the better are for the coatings, but polymer can manage relatively low resistivity. Hardness of water has a Im direct impact on galvanized steel only and does not influence the two other coatings. It has a positive impact on galvanized steel since it creates a, product, a production film. The icing salt can be used with the polymer laminated coating but needs to be limited for aluminized and galvanized. Now using a coating outside of the recommend ranges for any of those parameters may result in a very fast deterioration, so we need to be careful. As for the HDP pipes, a whole range of standard and custom fittings are available for CSP, including T's, elbows, Y's, saddles, branches, and manholes, to name just a few. Like I said before, CSP ends need to be rerolled to accept the couplers. There is the standard coupler that is soil type. On the other end, there is the other band coupler systems that suits perfectly applications where we want to reduce infiltration and exfiltration, like in detention systems, for instance. All couplers are available in the three coatings. The manufacturing process. Steel coils are used as raw material for the fabrication of corrugated steel pipes. All manufacturers have an inventory of coils with different coatings. The first step is a corrugation process where the metal sheet goes through a set of nine rollers to create the corrugation pattern. The set of rollers can be changed for different corrugation profiles. At the head of the machine, the corrugated steel sheet is curved according to the diameter. At the same time, the helical lock seam is formed by compressing the joint of the two sheet edges. The final step is to cut the pipe with a moving saw since the fabrication is a continuous process. After fabrication, corrugated steel pipe ends are re-rolled on this machine to obtain annular corrugation instead of helical one, as you can see on this picture. The roll hands ensure that the couplers will fit perfectly when assembling two lengths. Rerolled ends are not required for culvert composed of only one length 
of 15 meter or less. Transportation of flexible pipe is very cost effective by nesting pipe of different diameters as shown on this picture. This is especially true with CSP since the outside diameter isn't a very larger than the inside diameter. Nesting has even a bigger price impact on remote sites. Now installation of the of flexible pipes. Installation of round flexible pipes, although smaller flexible structure may demand less care in installation than larger ones, reasonable precautions in handling, uh, base preparation, assembly, and backfilling are required for all structures. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, flexible pipes are designed to distribute external loads to the backfill around it, which means the backfill is part of the structural integrity. First step is the preparation of the foundation. The foundation shall be free of rock ledges, mocks, frozen lumps, and organic material to prevent unequal settlement. Thus material of poor or non-uniform bearing capacity should be removed and replaced with suitable compacted fill. It is recommended to prepare a pre-shaped bedding to match curvature of pipe invert on about half of the diameter. This bedding shall remain uncompacted. Simple shape monitoring measuring is recommended in all types of installation of flexible pipes. Vertical dimension should not increase in excess of 5% of the nominal diameter and 3% for the horizontal dimension. Granular material for the engineered backfill envelope shall be free draining uniformly graded granular with 75 millimeter maximum particle size and less than 10 percent of fine particles. Backfill shall be spread in 200 millimeter loose lifts and compacted to 95 percent of proctor, standard proctor density or we can say 90 percent of modified proctor density. Backfill shall be spread and compacted parallel to the length of the pipe until the backfill reaches 7 eighths of the diameter. Now maximum difference in elevation on both sides of the pipe shall be limited to one lift at all time. Pipe hunches must be hand tap tamped where mechanical tempers cannot reach. The first lift of backfill placed over top the pipe acts as a caution layer, layer to protect the pipe from any equipment from coming into direct contact with the pipe wall. Caution arch is to be moderately compacted and need not reach 95 standard proctor density. Subsequent lifts shall be spread and compacted on the other sense, which means perpendicular to the length of the structure. Now installation of pipe arch slightly differs from round pipes in installation since the corner pressure is higher than round pipes. A special attention must be given to the shape of the bedding to ensure satisfactory compaction beneath the haunches. The soft bedding shall be two-thirds of the span. Backfilling operations remains the same as round pipes. Now there are a lot of reference works very useful. Uh, first one is Handbook of Steel and Drainage Highway Construction Products by CSPI which covers um, the steel products and there is the equivalent for, corrugate, for corrugated HDP which is corrugated polyethylene pipe design manual and installation guide by Plastic Pipe Institute. Now those reference works can be downloaded freely on their website. Now I will end off this presentation to Cody for the project profile section. All right, thanks Dominic for taking us through the first part of the presentation. I'm going to finish things off by going through a few project case studies involving the products and concepts that Dominic just discussed. First project I want to talk about is the Agri and Potash Mine in Saskatchewan. This was a twin run of 43 meters or 86 meters in total with a diameter of just over 2100 millimeters, so about 84 inches. The purpose of these lines was for the drainage of a brine pool, which only required a low pressure 3 psi bellin gasket joint. As it was brine water being conveyed, there was an extremely high salt content, 
making Duramax the optimal choice due to its ability to handle the high salinity of the water. Other large diameter options such as CSP or reinforced concrete pipe would have been much less likely to provide a long lifetime in these conditions. This next project is an example of CSP being used for stormwater management under a new parking lot that was constructed for an insulation manufacturer in Milton, Ontario. In order to handle the increased runoff from this newly paved surface, there is about 50 meters of very large 3600 millimeter diameter CSP and it was used as a combined storm sewer and detention system. Each length of the CSP was joined with a wide band coupler and each end of the run had a bulkhead as you can see in the left. Also in the image on the left, you can see the stubs and connections to both new and existing manholes, and it was these precast manholes that actually captured the surface runoff. For this project, a fully watertight system wasn't required, so CSP was the best choice due to its versatility and quite low cost when you compared it to other systems. The next project I want to look at was a large Duramax job that was completed in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. This is probably one of our most prominent Duramax pro projects as it was a very high profile combined sewer overflow project with a lot of large diameter Duramax. With older sanitary systems, such as the one that the city of Humboldt had, during a high volume weather event, the surface runoff and sanitary flows would actually combine into the same system and then this would discharge to the natural water course. Obviously, this is a major environmental concern and the best retrofit option is to store the combined flow from the event until it can be safely treated later at the storm or the sanitary treatment plant. Rather than installing a large and expensive dedicated storage tank, Duramax is an ideal product for this situation as the sewer run can be oversized so that this extra capacity of the storm sewer serves as the temporary storage during these events. This project for the city of Humboldt involved over 480 meters of 120 inch, so just over 3,000 millimeter diameter Duramax, and this was all coupled together using welded joints that could then be vacuum tested to ensure a full seal was achieved. The lower left image here shows the well, one of the welding crews completing one of the joint welds. Another advantage of this type of joining procedure for Duramax is that the entire pipe, or the full system, can be fully installed and backfilled, and then afterwards the welding crew can come in to complete the weld. This way there's no downtime or bottlenecks on site while you're waiting for a welding crew to finish a joint. And then the picture on the right it shows the connection of the Duramax system to the precast manholes using the custom fittings on the end of the Duramax. This next project is a fairly straightforward Boss 2000 example as it was used for drainage and storm sewer upgrades at the Lethbridge Airport in Alberta. HDP pipe was selected mostly due to its ease of installation which you can see in the image on the left. It was only a crew of two with an excavator and it's a fairly narrow trench for this sewer. In addition to the ease of installation, the the attractive price of HDP pipe was the other driving factor on this project. In total, there was about 3,500 lineal meters installed, ranging in diameter from 15 inches, or 375 millimeters, up to about 30 inches, or 750 millimeters. Next project is another Duramax job, one that was just completed actually last year for the MTO up in Atacokan, which is near Thunder Bay, Ontario. Originally, the existing 2,000 millimeter diameter culvert on this project wasn't scheduled to be replaced. But after a site investigation was done, it was decided that this 50-year-old culvert was past its service life and they added it to the scope. The initial idea for the new crossing was to use a polymer laminated CSP. But due to a variety of reasons, mostly pipe availability, the MTO decided that this was an ideal trial for Duramax. The installation of this 27-meter run of 84-inch Duramax went quite well. And as you can see in the images on the left, it was a soil tight coupler externally installed with a foam gasket. The last CSP example I have is very similar to the previous CSP slide in that it was a large diameter storm sewer slash detention system installed under a parking lot. There are nearly 160 meters of 1800 millimeter diameter CSP on this, all of which was aluminized type 2 CSP. But the reason why I wanted to highlight this job was the fact that rather than precast manholes to collect the surface runoff, this had five individual CSP risers. Each riser included an access ladder, and then in the field there was a concrete collar cast around the outside of the CSP in which the cast iron grate was placed. Again, the low cost of CSP was the driver for the product selection on this project, along with the speed at which the custom fittings and manholes could be fabricated and delivered to site. 
This next project was more of a tri trial project conducted by the City of Saskatoon. In an effort to keep up with the ongoing budget constraints, the City wanted to investigate lower cost storm sewer material options, and they undertook this trial project on Marquis Street. Three different diameters of 320 kPa Bell & Gasket HDP pipe were trialed, and they were installed under varying heights of cover. The City then hired AECOM to conduct a thorough review of the pipe after it was installed, and you can see the list on your screen of the, pro of the metrics that they investigated. The end result was an approval of BOSS 2000 for storm sewer use in the City of Saskatoon, up to six meters of cover, and you can also see the approval letter issued by the City. The final project I want to highlight is one that Dominic mentioned earlier, and it's another Duramax example, though used in a slightly different application. This project in Campbell River, BC, involved the relining of an existing steel structure that was well beyond its expected service life. Although there was a reduction in diameter because of the relining application, this was offset by the better hydraulics of the smooth wall Duramax when compared to the existing corrugated steel structure. And, as Dominic also mentioned, unlike other corrugated products, the reinforcing ribs on Duramax are quite shallow, maxing out at about two inches on the largest diameter, which made it better suited for this reline application. As you're sliding the new pipe into the existing, there's fewer areas that can snag and, and catch. I'm not going to go much further into this project, um, as you can visit our website, where there's a full case study done on this project, and then I encourage you to download it. That is all I have for project case studies. I'm going to pass things back over to our host, after which we'll continue on with the question and answer phase. Okay, thank you very much, Dominic and Cody, for your presentation. And thank you all for joining today's webinar. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and found the information valuable. Our question and answer period is coming. Um, please submit your questions. And if you have to leave, uh, feel free to log out. But we uh, hope you uh, stay for some questions and answers. Um, I first will be reviewing a few housekeeping items, um, but we'll be to the questions and answers in just a minute. For more on uh, what you've learned, what you've heard today, please uh, feel free to contact a local sales representative. You can find your local rep on our website um, at the local office locations. Also, feel free to contact one of today's speakers um, at the email addresses indicated here on the screen. We have an exciting webinar series planned for 2015. Our next webinar will take place on May 8th, only in a few weeks from now, on the topic Corrugated Steel Bridge and Tunnel Solutions. Up-to-date information and registration links can always be found on our website, so keep checking our news and webinars section for postings of upcoming events. Please stay connected with us. You can follow us on social media, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and also you can view past webinars on YouTube. You can also get the latest on ArmTech by following us on our newly revamped website, armtech.com, so we encourage you to check it out. We really do value your feedback and would like to know what you think of this event. At the end of the webinar, there will be a quick exit survey. Question number six will ask you if you're interested in receiving more invitations for ArmTech webinar events. Due to strict Canadian anti-spam legislation, we are required to have your consent to receive future invitations. So please, please, please select yes. If you do select no, you'll be permanently removed from our all emails and webinar announcements. So please, please uh, choose yes. We really hope you do. Thank you for joining again today. We'll go into questions and answers, which will be moderated by Jane. Thanks, Jane. So first question. How does one evaluate damage to CSP culverts during installation, i.e. severity of punctures or deformation? What is 20% deformation? Anytime you're talking about um, damages to CSP on site, the best thing to do is to get your local arm tech rep out there with you. It's tough to give a generic uh, answer like if, if there's a 20% damage, it should be replaced or repaired. Uh, it is a very, very versatile and robust product. So it is used to being banged around and installed on site. Uh, it's, it's not like some other products that can be broken or shattered when dropped. Um, but at the same time, as Dominic went over in detail, it's a, a soil steel structure. So if you do have dense deformations in it, uh, it may not be interacting properly once it's installed. Uh, so it's tough to give a generic answer. I would say the best thing to do is to talk to your local rep. Uh, generally across the country, we're, we're very, very approachable and easy to get out to site. Um, and there should be able to be someone that can come help you out with that. Uh, which of your plants primarily produces BOSS HDPE pipe? 
That's, again, a very region-specific question. Um, this webinar is tailored for a national audience. I'm sorry, this is Cody speaking, and I'm, I'm based here in Ontario, so I can tell you in Ontario, our Boss 2000 pipe is produced in Woodstock, Ontario, not far from London and the Kitchener-Waterloo area. Uh, in terms of other regions, I unfortunately don't know enough about the manufacturing locations. Uh, it is all available on the website, and Dominic, you may be able to, may be able to add in uh, in terms of Quebec and Eastern where the manufacturing facilities are. Yeah, actually, I can add to that because I've been all over the website. Um, so if you do go to into the Boss HDB products on the website, um, it will ask you to select your region by province, and it will list the available um, facilities for that, actually. So, um, Can you use Boss 2000 for sanitary sewers? An interesting question. Um, as Dominic mentioned, it's there's a specification CSA B182.6, which is actually a sanitary specification, and our polytype version, which is the 15 PS, PSI or 100 kPa joint, it meets that specification. That being said, again, I have a, a kind of an Ontario bias here um, when I speak about the product. We don't participate in the sanitary market here. Um, pardon the pun, but it's a bit of a, it can be a messy market, and we focus on what we know and where our expertise is, which is storm and drainage. What would be the best system for large earth fills? It depends on the diameter. Um, on both our CSP, or all three, I should say, CSP, Boss 2000, Duramax, it will indicate the maximum fill allowed over each diameter. Uh, when you start talking about the really big diameters, uh, because of the strength of the Duramax, of the reinforcing uh, um, galvanized rib, uh, it can handle really, really high. I don't have a rule of thumb. I, I can't say anything because it's diameter specific. Um, and then for the steel, you can also increase the maximum height of fill by upping, by upping the gauge. Um, so for certain diameters, if the minimum gauge, let's say, is 2 millimeters, you can actually increase the allowable height of fill uh, by increasing the thickness of the steel. Again, limited to the thicknesses available in our manufacturing capabilities. Uh, it's tough to give a, again, tough to give a generic answer on that one. It's really kind of case specific. Um, and if you're looking at something in particular, again, I'd, I'd encourage you to contact whoever your local rep is. Okay. Uh, as always, there's always questions about whether or not the slides will be distributed. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we distribute the slides and um, a recording of the webinar uh, at the end of the following week, along with emails for your CPD certificate. Is there any information available for use of steel pipes within aggressive environments such as low pH water courses due to agriculture residue? In terms of information available, I believe if you visit our website, if you look under, Dominic mentioned the three different coatings. I know some of these are American-based studies, uh, just because sometimes their universities are more apt to partake in detailed studies, uh, but especially for the aluminized type 2 steel, comparing it versus galvanized. Um, I don't have a copy of any of these studies in front of me, so I can't say if it was a pH uh, focus or if there was an, another metric that they were focusing on. But I'd encourage you to check it out. If you do have any issues finding it, um, you can contact either Dominic or myself. Um, and if it's specific to agricultural waste, again, I don't know if it really covers that in, in particular, uh, but it does go through the different uh, performance, I would say, of the, of the different coatings available for CSP. I would also add that on CSPI website, there's a lot of documentation and studies that can be consulted there. Uh, there is a section called documentations, so uh, looking at that section, there are a lot of material, interesting material. And our sales reps are trained to conduct water tests on uh, pH and res uh, resistivity. So if you're in touch with one of your sales representatives, they can walk you through that. Uh, question from Judy, what is the open area of a perforated pipe? And for, if you're talking about uh, the Boss 2000 or tubing, um, the drainage tubing, they're, they're slotted openings. Uh, I believe they're about 8 millimeter wide slots, but again, I don't want to misspeak. It is detailed in, in the product guide, um, and if you can't find the information, uh, I know I can email you out a copy of the perforation pattern um, afterwards. And Dominic, I don't know if you can add to that, but I don't. I just don't know the actual perforation size off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I can add that it's 32 centimeter, a square centimeter per meter of length for each pipe. But I, this is this is uh, in Quebec, and I guess this is all over country. But I'm not sure, 100% uh, sure of that. 
this one is, is quite broad, but, and, and, and you may have covered it, but it, it's probably worth just kind of going over again. What are the pros and cons of CSP versus HDPE? This is specifically for culverts. For culverts. Uh, a long list you could go over. It uh, depends on what your primary concern is. Um, as we kind of touched on in some of these other ones, uh, the first thing to look at is the environment it's being put in, water, soil conditions. Um, and as Janine had mentioned, you can definitely get a sales rep out to site with you. Do a full test and then we can recommend the right material based on that. Uh, there's cost considerations. Uh, up to a certain diameter, uh, HDP will be a little cheaper, um, but depending on the gauge of uh, CSP you're comparing to. And then once you get larger, CSP becomes uh, more economical. Um, in terms of site flexibility, if you foresee doing a lot of on-site cuts and um, custom joints, it's a little easier to work with HDP as opposed to CSP. Um, in terms of availability, I would say depending on the region, probably equal across the board if you're talking about standard sizes and length. Uh, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of different metrics you could compare, but I'd say those are probably the most, uh, most generic or the most common. I would add to that the condition loadings that are very important since steel in bigger, larger diameter can withstand very large height of fill and also live loads. So this is also uh, one information that is very important in that. The cost differences between HDPE and typical galvanized CSP, um, and I guess there's a weight factor as well with, with respect to shipping? Um, yeah, again, it's, it's a little difficult for me. I can say from an Ontario basis, um, depending on where it's going, like you said, James, up to, let's say, roughly a 21-inch, 20-inch diameter, so uh, 500 millimeter or so, uh, I would say HDPE, the Boss 2000, is generally equal to or, or possibly a little cheaper than steel uh, below those diameters. Above that is where the steel starts to become quite a bit cheaper um, when you talk about the larger diameters. Uh, and that's very generic. Um, if you're looking at something in particular, it's best probably to ask for a, for a budgetary quote to compare the two different products. And David was asking if we have drainage tables to assist with design of storm drainage runoff. Uh, Dominic, you may be able to add to what I'm about to say, but I know for the drainage tubing, I think it's more of an agricultural focus, uh, but there are tables for that um, in terms of the uh, infiltration into the pipe through the perforations. Uh, in general, I would say we don't have a, a basic table that you can just consult and say, here's the size for the, for the expected water flow. Um, we can help with that. We've got the technical expertise, but it's just not a, a generic tool we have on hand. That's right, Cody. We do not get involved in designing, in, in, saying de designing, but we can definitely help on the hydraulic uh, performance or uh, any charge we can give with, uh, or the parameters like the mannings and any, anything like that. On the structural side, we can definitely provide or uh, help in the design to make sure that the height of cover and uh, the, the, the condition loadings are are okay for the the particular pipe we are we want to put in there. So yeah, we can definitely help on that matter. Can you explain the difference between polymer laminated and polymer coated? Uh, the biggest difference I would say is we didn't really touch on. Um, sometimes they're used inter interchangeably, which is actually incorrect. Uh, we talked about polymer laminated CSP today, and that CSP, which is made from steel coil that we purchased that is already laminated. It's a factory process. It's done by the. Um, it's provided to us by the steel manufacturer as a fully laminated uh, coil of steel. We then take it in house, and as Dominic showed, we manufacture the CSP out of that. Polymer coated more applies to our, our uh, structural steel products, which we didn't talk about. But those are products that are larger structures, more uh, bridge type applications. Uh, the steel in those uh, products, it is made, formed, corrugated, and the last process is to coat it, whether it's a hot tip galvanized or polymer coating, and in that case, uh, they're sent to a third party who can uh, abrasive blast them, and then there's a process that they can spray the polymer coating on. Uh, very similar performance, but they are actually different uh, products that are used on the laminated versus the coated. Is there a specific pipe which can be put in a steep slope 15 to 20% grade uh, with velocity of 6 meters per second? I, I don't have a, a specific answer to a question like that. We could uh, we could look at that afterwards and do a quick calculation. Um, 
if you have to control the velocity, you're probably looking at something corrugated to help slow it down as opposed to a smooth wall pipe. Uh, but don't have a don't have a quick answer or calculation right now. Yeah, Cody, you're right. The best idea would be to try to reduce the the velocity of the uh, of the flow. But uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, I would not recommend CSP with those type of speeds. Uh, I would definitely recommend HDP since it is the best product that is that offer the best res uh, abrasion resist resistance. So. Uh, okay, so that answers the next one. The next question was how does HTPE compare to CSP in terms of abrasion resistance? Yeah, definitely uh, HTP performs better on, on that matter. Uh, we need to reduce velocity with uh, CSP. I would say uh, 4.5 meter per second, uh, we should be below that and there is no problem with CSP. Over that, I would recommend more uh, a product that is more abrasion resistant like HDP. Which cover should be chosen for a seawater environment? For a seawater environment? Uh, uh, we're kind of landlocked here in Ontario, so that's not something I see much of um, in terms of seawater. Uh, the Ontario provincial standards, um, they essentially dictate if it's less than three meters, which is then above three meters is a bridge. Below that, there's standard tables, which tell you the minimum cover. Uh, starts at about a foot, so 300 millimeters, and if the diameter increases, the cover can also increase. Uh, oh, good question. Um, can you highlight the bearing pressure differences between flexible and rigid pipes? Uh, so we, the only pipes we talked about today, they were all actually flexible pipes in their design, um, so interaction with the soil. I can't compare that to how that would compare to a rigid pipe. We don't, um, in Ontario, again, we don't manufacture anything like that to compare it to. Uh, Dominic, if you have anything else to add, that's about all I can say. I don't have any numbers uh, in front of me, but definitely when the bearing uh, capacity is lower, I would recommend flexible pipes since the the unsettlement the settlement will be probably more um, more equal through through the length of the pipe. So, but I don't have exact numbers. What is the uh, the limit where I would recommend a uh, rigid pipe because it also depends on the size of diameter. But if we have a project specific and with numbers, we would be glad to answer to that. Okay, and that, that wraps up our uh, questions for today. Thanks all, and uh, again, uh, keep an eye out. Uh, you'll get an email uh, next Friday with a link to the uh, YouTube video if you want to share it with your colleagues. Uh, as well, the slides are available uh, on SlideShare. It'll be on, all on the same page. We'll put it all on, on one page on our website for you to download. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.